Now, last week, um, we went over that trade proposal from that uh, Packers fan slash writer that was, it was pretty insane. Um, I, I don't even remember what the details were. I just remember it had the Ravens giving up Mark Andrews for a tight end coming off of ACL and an unproven wide receiver and some super low draft picks. But now, um, <laughs> I, I wonder, like, how did we get here? How do we get to this point? Because that trade proposal, that scenario, it had been making its rounds and circulating around amongst Ravens fans and whatnot. Uh, and now we got another one that's been doing the same. Now, this trade proposal. <laughs> people are crazy, man. Straight up. People are crazy. But, hey, I respect their craziness. I don't agree with it. But I respect their craziness and the fact that they're not willing to hide the craziness. And I think he may have been doing it just as a joke or whatnot. But behind a lot of jokes, they got some truth to them. But anyway, it came from nutty ex-professor uh, Jeremy Klump on Twitter. Uh, now, I do. I am like 99% sure he is a Dolphins fan. When I looked at his bio, I couldn't really gather anything from it. But I did see some Dolphins guys that I follow. They follow him. Uh, so I'm assuming he... He loves his Miami Dolphins. All right, cool. Um, but let's just read this, this trade scenario that he proposed. All right, it says, who says no? Well, <laughs> I think every Ravens fan would. Except, you know, the Ravens fans is like, hey, we should have never got this guy Lamar Jackson. We should have kept Joe Flacco forever. But anyway, um, shout out to, uh, is it PFT comm commenter? He did a perfect impersonation of a lot of Ravens fans with that whole flack of Lamar. Anyway, he said, who says no? Miami receives Lamar Jackson. And boom, right, right, right there off rip, man. It's, the trade is bad. It's bad. Because you, you got the Miami Dolphins getting Lamar Jackson. Even though a lot of people think that he's going to end up there. Hopefully not. Um, but anyway, Miami receives Lamar Jackson. So that when he asked the question, he started it off with who says no, I say no. And I think I can speak for some Ravens fans, a lot of Ravens fans, not all of them, because a lot of them would be like, yeah, ship them off. But the majority would be like, eh, yeah, no. But anyway, uh, Miami receives Lamar Jackson and Lamar Jackson signs a mega deal as part of the trade and the 2024 third round pick. So a third round pick two years in the future. That's what Ravens are giving up. Lamar Jackson and a third round pick two years down the road. Third round pick, hey, you could have that, but Lamar Jackson. Eh, but let's just see what the Ravens would receive. Tua uh, Tagovailoa, Tagovailoa, excuse me, I always say his name wrong. Tua, Ravens would receive Tua <laughs> automatically. The, the, the trade, the trade is done. I ain't got no problem with Tua. But I do have a problem with Tua as a Raven. I ain't got no problem with Tua, though. But as a, no. Yeah, mm -mm, no. 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 Mm -mm, no. No. No, thank you. Shout out to Tua, though. Nothing personal against him. But no. But it doesn't stop there. Lynn Bowden Jr., uh, who actually, he got drafted by the Raiders, I believe. And then he got traded to the Dolphins. I think the same season he got drafted by the Raiders, I believe. But Lynn Bowden Jr. And it's not done yet. And, and in, in a follow-up tweet, he called him like the, the next Debo. And this, I think he's joking around about it. But anyway. Um, so Ravens will receive Tua and Lynn Bowden Jr. A 2023 first. So this upcoming draft, a first-round pick. Uh, and another 2023 first. So two first-round picks in the 2023 draft. The one that they have from San Francisco. What trade was that for? Oh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I, I, I can't think of it. Anyway, uh, and a 2023 fifth round pick. So Ravens will get Tua, Lynn Bowden Jr., two first round picks in 2023, and a 2023rd fifth round pick. Oh, I know them, them, them Lamar haters. They, they in the background right now. They like, wait, wait, wait a minute. That, that doesn't sound too bad, man. Sign me up. And then he said, it seems like a win-win and a trade the Dolphins should try to pursue. <laughs> this is silly. This is silly. Um, but shout out to him for being willing to actually put it out. But this, this is silly. 
Um, first off, he said, who says no? I say no. I say no. Reason I say no is because the Ravens just to 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 any scenario where the Ravens would give up a Lamar Jackson. And we know we're talking about different scenarios. I know some people are like, oh, man, why are you even talking about it? That's crazy. But any scenario where the Ravens would give up a Lamar Jackson, the guy who literally changed and saved the direction that this franchise was heading in. He literally saved them. They were they were four and five when he stepped in. And then they entered the bye week. And anything is possible. Hey, they, they could have went on a, a streak where they won, what, eight games in a row? Well, no, back then it was still 16 games. So um, seven games in a row. And then ended, they could have ended up going 11 and five. Whoa, how about that? But if you were watching that team in 2018, you knew that wasn't going to happen. If you watched a team the previous year, you knew that wasn't going to happen. And again, y'all already know with Flacco, man, all the love in the world for Flacco. All the world, all the love in the world for Flacco. But it it was time. It 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 was, it was time. I, I feel like, and I said this before. I feel like with Flacco, I feel like the Ravens they moved on a little bit too late. A little bit too late. Uh, but hey, worked out in the long run. They end up getting Lamar. Just like with um, I know my guy Zach, New Era Zach on Twitter. He put out a what if scenario. He was like, well, what's the biggest what if moment for you? I don't know if he said as, as an NFL fan or as a Ravens fan, but what's the biggest what if moment? And I said, well, what if Billy Cundiff made the kick? What if Billy Cundiff made that kick? We all just knew that they would have went to overtime and they would have took care of business. We all just knew. But he obviously didn't make the kick. But then he was like, hey, but if Billy Cundiff makes that kick, we might not get Justin Tucker. He said it works both ways. I said, okay. I said, yeah, that's true. Good point. Then I said, oh, well, what about 4th and 12? What if the Ravens would have made the stop on 4th and 12 against the Bengals? And they could have went on to the playoffs. Who knows what could have happened? But if they do that, then there's a huge possibility, high chance that they don't get Lamar Jackson. Huge chance they don't get Lamar Jackson. And I told him it works both ways. So we can look back at a lot of different scenarios and things that happened and things that didn't happen and wonder like, oh, man, what if? And it's always fun to think about. It's always interesting to think about because just one play, one play can change the trajectory of a franchise. Because, again, the fourth and 12, it was one play and it changed the trajectory of the Ravens. Ravens make the stop there. Lamar Jackson is somewhere else. But the way that he came in and saved this team, I was just talking to uh, one of my guys about it the other day. My guy, um, oh, I, I forget his name off the top of my head. But we were talking about how this team, it just, things weren't looking good. They had absolutely no life to them. They were just, they were lifeless. No energy. They were looking like they were just, they were coming out there and, all right, yeah, let's get this game over with. Oh, yeah, we'll be a little competitive. Uh, maybe not, maybe, maybe, maybe not. It just, it wasn't looking good. And again, they were four and five, so it wasn't like they were losing every game, but it certainly wasn't like they were winning every game. They were just right, right in the thick of things. But you could tell they weren't headed anywhere. Insert Lamar Jackson, change some things up, and wow, oh my goodness. And ever since then, Ever since 2018, when they put him in the lineup, it's just been a winner. We're well, in the regular season. Playoffs, we got to work on that. We got to work on that big time. Um, but there's been a lot of different reasons why the Ravens haven't been winning in the playoffs. But, hey, they just get, they got to step it up. We know they can make it there. If they're healthy, we know they can make it there. Um, but they, they, all, they, they got a lot of work to do in the playoffs. But regular season, you know what you're getting. You, you know what's about to go. You, you know, for the most part, hey, the dude is a winner. He is a winner. And he's continued to show that he can make so much stuff happen, even though a lot of times I feel like they put a little too much on him. But he's a winner. He's a winner. So the fact that, and, and, and with him, he is a player that is it's so crazy. You can look around him. 
you could look around the entire roster and you could be like, man, I don't know about this. I don't know about this position. I'm questioning this position. And this is on offense or defense. You can look around the entire roster. But as long as you have number eight healthy and ready to go, you know the Ravens have a chance to win that game against whoever. Against whoever. And I remember there have been games where I've been like, oh, yeah, Ravens, they, nah, they ain't winning this game. Game I remember specifically, uh, 2019, in Seattle against the Seahawks. I was for sure, I'm like, hey, no, the Ravens. I said, hey, I, I love my Ravens, but I'm also an honest fan. I, I ain't one of them fans that was like, oh, yeah, we're going to win every single game. We're going to go under. No, I ain't with that. Y'all know that. But I was for sure in that game, I'm like, oh, yeah, we, we about to lose. We're going to lose by at least 10, at least two scores. We, we losing by at least 10. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. But Lamar and them said, nope, not today. Not today. And they, they took care of business. And that was uh, when I was like, oh, hold up now. This, whoa. Like, okay. Because I saw the games and stuff before that. I'm like, okay, yeah, this dude Lamar something special. Um, but it was that game. That game for me was a big uh, turning point. I was like, wow, like he, okay. All right. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he, this dude is something serious, man. And I knew he was something serious already, but this, that was a game where it was a real big turning point for me. Like, oh, yeah, he, right, serious, serious. He liked that. So, um, this, with this trade, uh, this trade proposal, this trade scenario, uh, it's big time nasty. It's big time nasty. Like, the Mark Andrews one was nasty, but this one is, is big time nasty. At least with this one, though, um, it's, it's a little more respectable than the Mark Andrews one. Uh, because this one, at least they included two first-round picks. Um, I don't think that would be enough for Lamar. I think Lamar is worth uh, more than that. Um, and not even talking about more than that. And uh, oh, Maybe because they, they put two in there and he, what was he, picked like six overall, something like that. Um, and Lynn Bowden Jr., I think he was a third or fourth-round pick. But maybe they trying to say, oh, that, that's like getting another first round pick because you got two a quarter. But uh, no, this is a, uh, he said, seems like a win win. Yeah, this is all winning for the Dolphins. This is all winning for the Dolphins because another thing to think about, too, um, you look at Ravens, specifically on offense. You look at Ravens' roster on offense and think about who, who's the special players on the Ravens' offense besides Lamar Jackson, obviously. We got Mark Andrews. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Gus Edwards, he's nice. He's nice. Um, but it's a lot of unproven guys. It's a lot of guys we like. We're not sure about. Not saying that they're not nice, but they're unproven. So we're like, okay, it's gonna go down. We're gonna see. We saw J.K. Dobbins in his rookie year. He, he flashed. We're like, okay, this guy gonna be so. Then unfortunately, he got hurt after that. Um, but you're like, okay, who who's gonna be? Who are those guys gonna be? besides Mark Andrews? Who who's gonna be that guy? The expectation is Rashad Bateman. But again, he just got to show it. Um, so we'll see how it goes. And we, we expected for him to do his thing, but it's still unproven. But then you look at the Dolphins roster. And it's like, oh, Tyreek Hill. Ooh. I mean, that right there is enough. Mike Jasicki, he is no Mark Andrews. He is not. He is not. But he's solid, though. He's solid. They got Jalen Waddle there, too. All that speed at wide receiver. Ooh, it's just so beautiful. So oh, beautiful to see. Then they, I think they signed Raheem Mostert too. A speed at running back too. Offensive line they signed Teron Armstead. They did some things over there, man, to really upgrade. Um, so the reason I bring that up is because when you see what Lamar Jackson has done uh, as Ravens quarterback with Ravens roster, and you see what he's accomplished, what he's done, and just the winning, and then you think about the possibility of him going to a team that like really significant, like really goes in for their quarterback. It's like, oh, whoa, oh my. You you think about the possibilities of them, what what it could be. Um, so that that's my reason for why I want the Ravens to really go in on Lamar. They did offensive line. Hey, let's go. Okay, offensive line, tight ends. Oh yeah, they got about twenty of them. Running backs. Hey, as long as they healthy. Hey, we straight. Wide receivers. We're gonna see. We're going to see. But this trade is a, uh, it's a big no-no. It's a big yikes. And again, it's a win-win for the Dolphins. 
Um, because you're getting somebody that is a straight up winner at the quarterback position. He's a winner. And he's somebody that's that's proven that whatever the circumstances are, no matter the circumstances, he'll win. He win. He will do everything in his power to try to pull you to victory. Even if he gotta do a lot of stuff himself. But he will do everything in his power um, to try to make you win. Um but yeah, for the for the Ravens, that would just I, I feel like it would just set them back. And they would have to start all over again from the drawing board. And that would not be pretty. They were almost there. Starting all over from the drawing board. But then Lamar came in and he saved the day. But anyway, uh, like we need to, uh, the place where we need to put this trade scenario uh, is just like the end of this video. Out. <laughs>